Hey everyone, I'm really excited to share a studio tour with you today. We're in my living room right now and Richard's getting ready to join me and let's go. All right, so you walk into this room. This is the studio space. Michael and I share a space. I take up about I don't know, 75% and then his spot is over in the front and he takes about 25%. I'll show you that in a little bit. But he also has another studio downstairs that is completely his. So these are really cool artworks he made of us. These are all my crazy things. There's so many crazy things in this video. Yeah, I wish I could tell you all the artists and all the people, but there's just so many pieces that I've collected. 99% of the stuff on the walls or around is not my work. I just got that necklace from Etsy. This is something my partner made me because I love crows. And then we have my books and yes, they're color coded another little creature my partner made me, an artwork that we made together. I just picked this up locally by an artist. This is my most recent piece. The horse was made by my best friend Jennifer and this beautiful owl sculpture was made by my partner as well. He is so talented. I love having artwork around the studio from other people that I love or just other artisans in general. I've had this piece for years. I have no idea who made it. I've had it for at least 15, 20 years. Here are some journals that I work in, more books, more nonsense, and more books. Here's my easel. Here's a piece I'm working on as well as a piece that's finalized. I love birds and you know this if you watch my channel. I love them. I have a couple bird cages hanging around the studio. And then that big piece right there is from a Russian artist. I picked this up at the Goodwill. It's actually from the 80s, that Harlequin. Not a big doll person, but I fell in love with her. More art supplies and Puss in Boots. And sculptures on the back wall by different artists that I love. And all the plants are real. Here's my Daniel Smith watercolor collection. I'm in love with Daniel Smith watercolors, as well as their gouache. Little sculpture back there I made. And I love, again, Daniel Smith watercolors. I love having them set up like this. It's like being in a store, which is a lot of fun. And this is my area that I work. Let's walk past it really quickly. Let's check out this chair. So I bought this at a Goodwill. It's made with real sticks. It is now a plant stand. This is my framing area because officially I had to finally take space to have a framing area. I ended up doing it on the floor often and with dogs. It's not a good idea to try to frame something on the floor. And this has been giving me a bit of a headache so I'm not gonna open the bottom. I'm getting a new one of those. I moved and it's not been right since. Backing paper. Let's go back through here. Here's a little teeny tiny nook in front of my desk. So I have this drawer access here with other goodies, 3D elements, and then this little cabinet right here where it has some of my old journals. And then this also opens right here too. 
and that's where I store some palettes. This cord is in my way, but it's a teeny tiny nook and more palettes. And then we have my cart with all my stuff on it, my Robax palettes. If you love amazing palettes, I will link the video below this Robax palette. I have a small one and an extremely large one are probably my most loved art supplies. I just absolutely love the access to all my Daniel Smith paint. And then some other supplies. Let's see what's in here. Oh yeah, glues and adhesive and sprays and Mod Podge, some journals, washi tape. All right, let's go over and sit by my desk. In this drawer are my Karen Dash Luminance colored pencils. My Polychromos are in the bottom and on the top are mostly skin tones and colors that I use. In this top drawer, we have some ink and beads and erasers and some crystals that I like using. And in this drawer here, I have references, transfer paper. Down here is uh, the paper, watercolor paper I use. I have it cut. And this is for an upcoming um, art haul. So that'll be soon. That'll come in the next week. We have Schmincke granulating. Anyway, in the bottom there is some boards. I tape my watercolor to. Here's a board and artwork that I'm actually currently working on, as well as the palette and my cups. All right, let's see what's in here. So at the top here, we have Derwent watercolor pencils, which are awesome. I love Derwent, especially as a graphite artist. And then we have those metallics. And then we have these Derwent graphitin. So that's graphite tinted with color. And then let's go back here to these metallics. One set of these metallics are water resistant and then the other set are actually watercolor pencils, which is lovely. And then down here I have my extra Derwent graphites and my white and black Prisma. I do not use Prisma typically, but I like the white a lot. These are Karen Dash Museum Aquarel, and those are amazing watercolor pencils. I love them so much. My extra skim tones of uh, Karen Dash and Polychromos. And then these are the Derwent Ink Tents, which I love those as well. I think that's in the bottom drawer too. I want to share my lamp with you. It is an expensive lamp, but definitely worth it if you do video. It's a canvas lamp. The bottom is extremely solid and heavy, so you don't knock it over. Underneath my desk, I have my heat tool. I have some other storage, kind of messy. I have extra piece of watercolor paper for testing and my rags. Here are some of my watercolor cups. I have a lot more than this but those are the ones I use often. I was just checking. I didn't think there was anything in there. Not easy to shut, but a really good skinny little storage unit. Some more reference material and paper, and it looks like I have a Schmincke dot card here that I was planning on doing in the near future. Let's pull this out. All right, one, two, three. Three. And so it came from Amazon. It was all bent, kind of a bummer, but this is going to be exciting. 
I did get some granulating ones I'll share with you. And then here's some paper, because I love 3D work, frames for some upcoming shows that I'm preparing for. And then, oh, I forgot to tell you, these are my Daniel Smith gouache. It's the 22 colors that came out. They have 52 more that are coming out. Daniel Smith watercolor ground. And then that's an M-gram. I just picked one I wanted to see. It's very sticky and it doesn't dry in the pan, so I don't love it. Here are some of my watercolor palettes. This teeny, teeny, tiny Windsor & Newton. Hard to do this with one hand. You know what? I just realized that I found one floating around and I stuck it in here. And look, it was missing its little friend. Okay, now we'll put it back in there. So I love that little travel one. This is the first watercolor set after Prang, but it is student grade, so I did move to Daniel Smith, and that's a professional grade watercolor. And then we have some Holbein gouache down here, which I have some reviews that are coming up of those. It is their season sets of gouache. So you're looking at summer, fall, winter, spring, there's some extras, and then this is a, a cute little palette that I made. A lot of specific artisan watercolors are in there that are not name brand. They're made by artisans on Etsy, which I love. Down here is more palettes. I have a bit of a palette obsession. All right, let's sit down and see what's under here. All right, second shelf is where I store some art pieces that are going to shows or things that I've just done and are framed and they need a safe place to be. So here is that. I have a couple eye drawings that are either gonna go up in my store or they may go to shows, but I did them in the last month. I love this blue one with the gold, lots of fun. And then this was fun too. So it's where I keep my smaller artwork. I have jewelry that I've made in here of my art, which is funny as I'm looking at it. It's very fitting for the time of year this video is coming out because it's gonna be Halloween in a couple weeks. So that's exciting. But I love making jewelry and I'll probably make some jewelry of my newer pieces. It's been at least a year and a half, maybe two, that I've done any jewelry. And then here is some pieces of artwork. All of those are pieces that Michael made me. I have so many little tiny lovely pieces he made me and I have to hang them up in the studio since we just moved here and we're still, still hanging up things. All right, let's push that back in here. Magical drawers. Yeah, you might wanna see what's in here. So these are old photographs. They have the frames or they sometimes they have images still in them. A lot of them don't. I use them for collage. These next two drawers are all review drawers. So there are supplies in here that are for upcoming reviews that it's really exciting for me to do. I don't always do name brand reviews. I know everybody says that's like the most important, but I like off brands or brands that are just kind of different. Gravy sent me that, so I'm gonna be doing a review for them, checking out their watercolors. I just love art supplies. And there's my tripod back there. And some eye drawings that I recently did. Some more of them. They're gonna go to a local shop. Also, when I use the Karen Dash Neo Color 2, I will take the, the pieces that come off from sharpening it and I'll put them in those containers and use them as watercolor because it's kind of a waste when you sharpen them. All right, let's go back. What a beautiful fall day. The sun is shining. This is Michael's spot. He doesn't use as many art supplies as I do, so he doesn't need as big of a spot. And he got me this beautiful Paulina Cassidy. These are handmade brushes that I made for fun. This is another Michael gift. How cute, little bird. Another Michael gift. These are sacred fauna pieces, collaborations between Michael and I. If you don't know what sacred fauna is, go to sacredfauna.com. Another beautiful piece that Michael made me. Just love it. Love that mask. It's amazing. 
that antique piece of furniture belonged to a very important person in my life and I store some things in there there's more shipping uh, and framing stuff and in here when I send out orders I send little cards to people so I keep all of my little cards and envelopes and stamps in here and this piece hanging on the door is from my friend Cindy love it so much Down here is some frames. I have a ton of frames in my garage, in my storage unit, but this is also more accessible, apparently. I do not know how to shut this. I forgot to mention that in here is where I store some art that I'm working on, the Waterford paper I'm gonna do a review on. There is some Diane Townsend pastels. And let's look at some of the pieces I've recently done. I put them here in this portfolio. The light is in the way. Let's see if we can get out of the shiny area. It's not as easy to see them through the plastic, but you get the idea. And I've been experimenting. I've been working a lot on hands. Hands are always a challenge, I think, for a lot of people. So I've been forcing myself to put hands in artwork. And these were some of my quick studies that I've done for the Halloween season. Love that, lots of fun. All right, let's go over here because I wanted to show you this piece I'm working on to submit to an exhibition. It's one of the biggest pieces I've done exciting but kind of scary another creature michael made for me oh no okay this is jenkins and jenkins continually falls over <laughs> i didn't even know earlier that he was oh jenkins and his little bird jenkins is the studio mascot and then i picked this up at a beautiful wonderful antique store here called la junk antiques I did a walkthrough through there looking for frames. I'll also link that video below. And then these handmade Day of the Dead rattles. And like I mentioned earlier, this beautiful piece of artwork. I just love being in the studio space. It's the biggest studio space I've ever had in my entire life. And it's just so very exciting to be here. Oh, and one last thing I did forget. I do want to share what it looks like when my studio is set up to do time lapses or reviews. I took the lights out initially because it took up a lot of space when I was trying to do the video, but this gives you an idea of the lighting and how I do videos and I record to put videos up on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me for the studio tour and coming in, hanging out in my space with me. I just love that I can continue to make art and I also love being able to share the journey with everyone here on YouTube. It's a lot of fun to make the connections with everybody. If you enjoyed this, please consider liking and subscribing. I really appreciate you being here and thank you so much for supporting what I do.